हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन वुड बी रेस्पिरेशन इन प्लांट्स नाउ लाइक एनिमल्स इवन द प्लांट्स आल्सो अंडर गो द प्रोसेस ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन लाइक एनिमल्स द प्लांट्स इवन रिक्वायर एनर्जी एंड टू गेट दैट एनर्जी द प्लांट मस्ट अंडर गो द प्रोसेस ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन एंड इन केस ऑफ प्लांट्स द रेस्पिरेशन अकर्स to the simple process called diffusion why because in plants this plants are having a large surface area when compared to their volume now when coming to this respiration in plants first we should know how the respiration in plant is different from that of the respiration in animals it differs in three ways what are the three ways number 1 in plants each and every part like a uh, root or the stem or the leaf they carry out the process of respiration individually whereas in case of animals the entire process is carried out in a single unit coming to the respiration in plants the respiratory gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide they just travel a little bit of distance but in case of animals this respiratory gases they need to cover a long distance in the body of the animal when we are talking about respiration in plant the rate of respiration is quite slower when compared to the respiration in animals so these are the few differences between the respiration in plants and respiration in animals as just now i told you people that in plant the parts of the plant like root stem and leaf they undergo the process of respiration individually let's first take the respiration in roots now you can see in this picture in the diagram that the air is present in between the soil particles these are your soil particles in between the uh, soil particles you can see the air spaces right and the epidermal cells of the roots they form this root hairs this root hairs are formed due to the extension of the epidermal cells of the roots now you can also see that the root hairs are in direct contact with the air spaces so what happens the oxygen which is present in the air in the spaces they will diffuse the oxygen will diffuse from here to the root hairs and from the root hairs it will go to the cells of the roots where the process of cellular respiration will take place and then what is the product of uh, respiration carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide will come out from the cells of the roots and then via the root hairs it will diffuse out into this air spaces so this is how respiration occurs in the roots it is observed it is seen that the land plants if they are having their roots in a water locked condition ultimately they are going to die why so because the excess water which are present in the soil they will expel out the air they will expel out the oxygen and in the absence of oxygen the roots of the plants they will not get the oxygen and that's why aerobic respiration will not take place and the plant will ultimately die but certain adaptations are also seen in certain plants like in mangrove ecosystem like in mangrove like mangrove trees are there for example rhizophora in mangrove uh, trees the lateral roots which are there what will be the adaptation seen in this uh, mangrove tree the lateral roots they will come out for example if the root system the lateral root will come out of the soil surface and will form the aerial roots this aerial roots are also called as pneumatophores and even knees they will absorb the atmospheric uh, air and thus the respiration will be 
taken place in the mangrove trees. Now, even if you take out an aquatic plant, like for example, lotus or a water lily, if you carefully observe the stem of those aquatic plants, they do have a hollow stem. It's a kind of adaptation in aquatic plants to be in the water. Apart from it, they even have large air cavities which connects the stem to the root, which actually facilitates or helps in the process of diffusion in the upper part of the plant. So, this is about the respiration in roots. Now, coming to, for example, if I take it at respiration in roots, the second one, I can just go with respiration in stems. Respiration in stems. So, the stems of the herbaceous plants, you know what are herbaceous plants? The herbs. The stems of the herbaceous plants, they do contain stomata. And through this stomata, the oxygen from the air diffuses inside and the carbon dioxide also diffuses out through this stomata. But what happens in the hard woody stems? The hard woody stems, they do not have this stomata. The hard and woody stems... They have lenticels. What are lenticels? Lenticels are the small pores. They are the small holes which are present in the outer portion of the bark through which the oxygen from the atmospheric air diffuses in and goes to the inner cells of the stem where the process of respiration is carried out. Carbon dioxide is produced and then via this lenticels, the carbon dioxide diffuses out. So it is about the respiration in stems. Now let's see the respiration in leaves. Number three. As it was told that the different parts in a plant they carry out the process of respiration individually. In leaves there are tiny pores. Those tiny pores are called as your stomata. You can see over here it's a stomatal opening. So, the leaves, they do have the tiny pores which are called as stomata and through the stomata, the oxygen diffuses in and the carbon dioxide diffuses out. Now, just see here, the stomatal pores, they lead to certain huge air spaces in the leaves and the oxygen which has entered, the oxygen which has entered through the stomatal pores will now reach the air spaces. This air spaces are lined with water. Right? Now the oxygen will get dissolved in the water. And this oxygen will then enter into the cells via the porous cell wall. And the oxygen will be utilized in the cytoplasm of the cell for the breakdown of the sugar, carbon dioxide will be produced. This carbon dioxide will now go out of the cytoplasm via the porous cell wall into this air space. And from the air spaces, it will move to the stomatal opening and from there, the CO2 will diffuse out. So, this is about the respiration in plants. Now, certain experiments can be uh, carried out to show that carbon dioxide is produced during respiration in plants and even heat is also produced during respiration in plants. Let's first see how carbon dioxide is produced in the respiration in plants. First we need to take a glass bottle. This is a glass bottle wide-mouthed glass bottle. In the glass bottle, you put some sprouts and then through the mouth of uh, this glass bottle, you place a beaker which will contain the lime water. Place it at the base of this glass bottle. Now, you just tighten the mouth of the glass bottle with the help of a cork. It's a cork. 
leave it for some time after a day or after a few hours what you will be observing is that the lime water has started turning milky why the lime water will turn milky because the sprouts will undergo the sprouts are nothing but the germinating seeds they undergo the process of respiration so during respiration the gas what they have produced carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide has made this lime water what milky which shows that carbon dioxide is produced during respiration in plants now we can conduct one more activity to show that heat is produced during the respiration in plants for that what we have to take we need to take a flask in the flask we have to place certain amount of sprouts sprouts are nothing but the germinating seeds now we need to tighten the mouth of this flask with the help of a one hold cork and through the hole in the cork we have to insert the thermometer and then we have to first check the initial temperature of the thermometer after every 2 hours you just check the reading in the thermometer what you are going to observe, uh, observe the mercury level in the thermometer will rise which shows that heat is being produced as the heat is being produced due to the respiration carried out by the sprouts the heat was produced and that heat has raised the mercury level in the thermometer so by this two activities we can show in the first activity we can show carbon dioxide is produced in the respiration in plant and in the second activity we can show that heat is produced during the respiration in plants our last topic for uh, the chapter respiration would be evolution in gases exchanging system now in your previous classes you have studied about the diversity in organisms kingdom animalia it has thousands millions of uh, organisms animals starting from phylum porifera nidaria platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes annelida arthropoda then mollusca echinodermata chordata so different phylums are there and in different phylums different types or different kind of organisms we can see now different organisms have different respiratory structures for example if we take the case of unicellular organisms let's first take the case of unicellular organisms for example your amoeba or certain simple multicellular organisms like your hydra then uh, planaria this hydra it belongs to which phylum nidaria planaria belongs to the phylum platyhelminthes right so this unicellular organisms and the simple multicellular organisms like hydra and planaria they undergo the respiratory gas exchange by the simple process of diffusion what is diffusion movement of substances from the higher concentration region to the lower concentration region for example if it is a uh, your amoeba right the concentration of oxygen outside is more and inside the cell it is less so what will happen the oxygen will move from the outside into the inside and in the cell of the amoeba what happens the respiration occurs carbon dioxide is produced co2 so the co2 concentration is more inside in the body of the amoeba and it's less outside so what is going to happen via diffusion carbon dioxide will move out from the cell to the surroundings so thus in simple multicellular organism and unicellular organism the process called as diffusion is used for respiratory gas exchange 
then i was saying you about certain phylums like uh, let us take the phylum uh, annelida in phylum annelida we have organisms like your earthworms then we have leeches they do have a thin skin which is moist and have a rich supply of blood so what happens the oxygen moves into their body through the skin and then it is absorbed by the blood and then it moves to the cells in the cells the co2 is produced and then the co2 will travel through the blood and will diffuse out of the body through the skin so in phylum annelida particularly in earthworm and leeches what kind of respiration we are able to see we are able to see cutaneous mode of respiration what is cutaneous respiration if the respiration occurs through skin we call it as a cutaneous respiration now let's take another phylum let's take arthropoda uh, in class insect of arthropoda we do have a grasshopper then even we have cockroaches now let's see how in grasshopper and uh, cockroaches the respiratory gas exchange occurs in the body of the grasshopper and the cockroach there are certain openings those openings are called as your spiracles fine so the air will enter the oxygen will enter through the spiracles and then it will move to certain you air tubes those air tubes are called as trachea those trachea further branches into small tubes which are called as your tracheoles and then from the tracheoles the air directly goes into the cells in the cells respiration process takes place carbon dioxide is produced carbon dioxide moves from the cells to the tracheoles tracheoles to the trachea and then via spiracles it goes out in the surrounding so in uh, grasshopper and cockroaches which kind of uh, respiration we observe we observe tracheal mode of respiration tracheal respiration now let's take certain aquatic organisms the aquatic organisms belongs to many phylum for example here i have drawn a fish the fish belongs to the class chordata fine then we do have your uh, what to say the prawns the prawns belong to the phylum uh, arthropoda now this aquatic organisms like your fish they do have a special respiratory structure the special respiratory structure in them is called as gills and this gills are actually not seen from the outside because it is covered by a bony structure which is called as your gill cover okay now let's see how this fishes breathe where the fishes live the fishes live in water what the water contains water contains uh, dissolved oxygen in the water the oxygen is present in the dissolved form dissolved oxygen is there in the water so what the fish will do the fish will open its mouth to take in the water the water will go inside and then it will flow over the gills what is the function of the gills the gills will extract the dissolved oxygen from the water and the water will go out through the gill slits now the oxygen which has been extracted by the gills will be absorbed by the blood in the body of the fish and via the blood it will go to the different cells where the respiration process will take place and the co2 released will come out and then via the gills and the gill slits it is going to go out so it is the uh, aquatic uh, respiration in the aquatic organisms so as you have seen that they do have a special structure called as gills or branchiae the mode of respiration which is seen in fishes and few other aquatic organism is your branchial 
mode of respiration. So till now how many we have seen? Diffusion. Then we have seen cutaneous respiration via skin. Tracheal respiration which is seen in grasshopper and cockroaches where the respiratory gas exchange occurs through the trachea. And then we have seen the branchial respiration in fish where who plays the vital role? The gills play the vital role. Now if we see the frogs, the frogs they can undergo respiratory gas exchange both via skin because they do have the moist skin and even through the lungs. If the respiration occurs through lungs, we call it as pulmonary respiration. Pulmonary respiration. In case of class reptilia, ace, mammalia, what kind of respiration is seen? Pulmonary respiration. Because we human beings, uh, reptiles, even the birds, what do they have for respiratory gas exchange? They do have the lungs. So we have seen the different types of respiration like Diffusion, cutaneous, diffusion, cutaneous respiration, then tracheal respiration, pulmonary respiration, then branchial respiration. Now the question is what are the factors which are responsible for the different respiratory structures in different organisms? The factors are the habitat in which the organism lives, even the availability of water. Their body size, the, some of the organisms are very small, some are quite large. Then it is the type of circulatory system, whether they are having open circulatory system or closed circulatory system. This you will be studying in chapter number 3 in the circulation chapter. So these are certain factors which are responsible for the different organisms to have the different respiratory structures.